Alrighty. Now the roll call. Okay, so 4 p.m. And um, Vice Chair Evans. Bob, are you there? Uh, he's muted. Oh, yes, I am here. Yeah. I didn't realize I was a vice chair. <laughs> Castagna. I'm over here. <laughs> O'Neill. I'm here. Peek. Here. Sovereign. Here. Thomas. Mother John here. And Matowski. Present. All right, thank you. So we'll go to the consent calendar where we have the minutes. The minutes from the last meeting. Anybody um, have any questions or concerns or additions? If not, can we have a motion to approve? I'll move approval. I'll second. Any further discussion? Uh, can we vote or do you need a roll call, Francesca? A roll call. Evans? Yes. Castagna? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Eek? Yes. Sovereign? Yes. Thomas? Yes. And Matoski? Yes. Thank you. Next, we go to public comments. No matter where you're at, you could be at uh, any council chambers or at the Alvarado <laughs> Brewery or at home. But if anybody wants to speak on something not on the agenda, this is the time to do it. Yes, and today's meeting due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the council directed that all board and commission meetings for at least these next 30 days through February 17th will be held virtually. There are two ways to participate in today's museums and cultural arts commission meeting. You may join on Zoom using your computer or smartphone and you may call into the Zoom meeting. To join the meeting on Zoom, use the link or phone number on the agenda at isearchmontray.org. To call in by telephone, dial toll free 833 568 8864. Enter meeting ID 161 622 2299, followed by the pound sign. If prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at Monterey.org forward slash public meetings. To make a public comment using Zoom, raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand button in the Zoom toolbar. If you dialed in by phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine and unmute yourself when called upon by dialing star six. Attendees will be muted until it is your turn to speak. Public speakers will be called on in the order of their hands raised. Today's meeting is also streamed live on the city's YouTube account at youtube.com forward slash city of Monterey with an approximate 10 second delay and on Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. If you plan to make a public comment, join the meeting using Zoom or by telephone and ensure you join in time to accommodate the delay. As always, we look forward to receiving your public comment. And Chair Wachowski, there are no public comments at this time. Hey, thank you. Now we'll move on to the activity report. Are you ready, Inga? I'm ready. So you'll notice that this was a rather short report this month. And the reason being that both Jordan and Francesca were on vacation in January. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of activity. You must have done I something. I know. <laughs> Well, I've got the contract ready to go to lend the um, James Fitzgerald painting to the uh, Monterey Museum of Art for their Seeking Eden exhibit. If nobody has seen that exhibit yet, I encourage you to uh, view it. It runs from January 13th through April 23rd of 2022. And uh, James Fitzgerald was friends with Ed Ricketts and Steinbeck, so he was part of that that group, even though he didn't wind up um, spending the rest of his time here in California, he went back um, east. Um, then also, uh, thanks to uh, some folks in the room, we had some tours. So we had um, Pacific Biological Laboratory tours on January 8th. And because of the Omicron variant, we reduced the number of people that could attend a tour, typically it's 15, but we reduced the number. 
just to be on the safe side. And um, then Jordan uh, met with State Parks. Jordan, our um, artifact specialist, met with State Parks to receive the return of the um, angels, the Erica Frank angels that they borrow every year to adorn their adobes. And I think that's about it, but I will turn it over to Jordan for any other comments. Um, well, first off, hello everyone. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Last month was basically a recovery month of getting out of the holidays and trying to just get back to normal, which it's almost, I mean, I guess the new normal, but um, yeah, uh, with, with the Omicron surge and tours, things got a little backed up. We had some docents back out. So um, we, we got desperate enough that I had to give a tour of Edricket's lab. So I did my first tour um, yeah. to two people, which it went well. And I guess it went well enough that one of those people joined us as a new docent who is starting next weekend. Oh, so, great. so that's about the highlight of the month. Otherwise it's just kind of the usual mundane answering emails, uh, phone calls, research, that kind of stuff. Jordan, how do you explain that there were 30 more visitors to the Presidio Museum than Colton Hall? That's that's surprising to me. <laughs> Tim I... can answer that question because one of the things we didn't announce is there's been a transition for who coordinates the volunteers. So Tim. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, because they know that the uh, Presidio Museum, that whole area actually is. My good friend Sandy Lyden likes to say the Puy Lobos is the center of the universe. And I always say that the Presidio property up there is the center of the center of the universe. And that's why they were up there. Huh. Wasn't, wasn't a busload of uh, school children there or something? <laughs> no, no school kids. Not yet, at least, but I would also just assume. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. No, I just said, I, I think probably because the, the weather was really good last weekend, too. I think that plays a big part of that. A lot of people went there to walk their pets and things like that. Yeah, we, we get more foot traffic when it's, the weather's nice. Yeah. And I'm assuming we're probably getting more soldiers um, just because mm -hmm. the, the, with the pandemic and being right there. I, I, I think the Army has been trying to get them to go through. But... I haven't heard anything specific while we're having more visitors, but not going to complain. Mm. Already, uh, any other questions from the commission? Yes, I, I have a question. Uh, I happen to see uh, the people loading the angels back into the shed at the end of uh, the Presidio. Um, and it, it just struck me, oh, what? What is the disposition of the angels and, and how is it that they borrow them, et cetera? Well, State Parks only borrows nine. So the rest of the angels, and if you saw them loading them up at the Presidio, they're not supposed to be loading them up there, which means I'm gonna have to go check that out. But um, that's our um, streets division, that's their storage. And so, in the past, they've kept some storage there, but it's supposed to be in the parking garage with the rest of the angels. So I will be going down there next week to take a look at that. But, so thank you, Mike, for reporting that because, yeah, they're not supposed to be storing them there. But that does raise the interesting question of the number of angels that were on display this year. And I have heard people comment that it didn't seem like there were as many angels as there have been in prior years. So uh, we have a new person in charge of the building maintenance folks. And I know that in the past, Chalet would always give them a list of uh, angels to put up and where to locate them and how many. And I found one of those old lists and it was significantly uh, more angels in the past than were put up this year. So I think uh, as we move along and as contracts like that get drawn up, we need to revisit it with the, the parks folks because those angels were commissioned to be, you know, uh, hung and, and um, it's a tradition. And, and if we, unless it's a significant issue of cost, I would think that we would want to display more angels. Thank you. 
And to go on more on that, um, ever since they started contracting out, it seems like they've been fewer and fewer um, because before the pandemic, they would they just started like when I first started on this job, all of a sudden they just started taking the angels and we were like, whoa, like, let us know. But also we need to start going through and inventorying the angels and see what shape they're in and to make sure that they're able to be hung up. Um, we did that when I was a CSUMB student, I helped catalog the angels and that was back in 2017. So we may need to do that again, just to to make sure that they're in good shape um, and how many are able to be hung. And yeah, I was one of the ones who noticed the, the lack of angels downtown this year. So Inga, I don't know who's in charge of the parks uh, department. Is that eventually Steve Whitry? Maybe it we ought to maybe ought to tell uh, you know transfer and have a duplicate responsibility that Steve Whitry tracks the number of angels that are supposed to go out as well as somebody in uh, in your office. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good point. Um, any other questions from the commissioners? Oh, yes. I have Inga. one more comment about angels since we were talking about them, and that is uh, also I see that in the past. Um, there, we have used some of the public art fund with, of course, the commission's approval to uh, restore angels. And so once we inventory the angels and we see their condition, it might be that we come back to you requesting uh, expenditure of some funds towards uh, refurbishing any that might be damaged. So. That's well, you might check with Charlene. Another alternative, Inga, is the old Monterey Foundation several years ago worked with uh, the city and we had uh, new some angels refurbished as well as some new angels. And we actually bid, uh, we sold those new angels um, at an auction at a mm -hmm. party at the Maritime Museum and that raised money for the public art fund. So rather than, you know, I think old Monterey Foundation would be glad to do that again if you need more angels or the old ones refurbish. And it was a great, uh, I think that was a great project. Very yeah. successful. So I have a question. Yeah. I have yeah, a John. question, um, Jordan. Uh, you mentioned somebody contracts out. Is, is that to put the angels up, take them down or? Correct. Yes. Um, so Streets hires a company, I guess, because they have a, a cherry picker or a a bucket to, that someone can get up and go up high and hang up the angels. So they contract that out now. Thank you. And I'd also like to throw in again in the uh, next year that uh, the city work with the Cannery Row company and get those Cannery Row angels finally put back up again. Maybe you can store them all together. Right. In fact, maybe they would want to turn them over to us. That's what I'm saying. I, I bet they yeah. would. And uh, they'd be great to have them back up again like they. Good, good comments. Any other questions or comments on the activity report? Okay, so no action has to be taken, but uh, Francesca, we take public input on this, right? Yes, to make a public comment, please raise your Zoom hand, or if you called in by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Trevotowski, there are no public comments. Thank you. So we have three public appearance items. Uh, Inga, the first one is murals. You want to um, go with the staff report? Sure. So this is something that um, our chair asked that we agendize for this meeting. And uh, you'll all recall that at our last meeting, we had a great presentation by um, Kat Morgan uh, regarding murals uh, in downtown Monterey and some stimulating ideas about what kinds of murals and you know what sorts of murals are present and maybe some walls that might need murals. And then um, I found out from talking with Tim Thomas and then with uh, Kim Cole and our chair, I found out a little bit more about what's involved when a uh, when somebody wants to have a mural put up in uh, Monterey. And uh, basically if it is a historic building that's proposed, then a historic permit 
application um, is required. And then that might go to the um, History Commission and the Historic Preservation Commission, sorry. And then um, if it is a building that has not been designated as historic, then it requires an architectural review permit. And that then uh, leads to potential of needing to go before the architectural review committee. And uh, Kim Cole is very supportive and has talked to me about this in the past that uh, the city really needs a um, art, public art master plan. And a lot of other cities have those. Um, and then with one of those in place, we can draft one and then it would any mural project would come or public art project would come before this body, the Museums and Cultural Arts Commission. And if we did want to, so that is on our work plan to try to work on that. Um, and then if we did, once we're ready to work on that, um, we might even use some of our public art funds to have a consultant help us um, produce a public art master plan and that way that would ensure that it's, um, you know, we engage the community and, and there's no perception of bias on the part of staff or commissioners so that we're as inclusive as we can be in what the city would need. So that's the, that's the summary and then uh, take it away, Bill. How much money is actually in our public art fund? Oh gosh, that is an, Excellent question, and the number has completely gone out of my head. I mean, just approximately. <laughs> you have any idea? Okay. Said... Well, I know there's more than seventy-five thousand. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so right now, based on what you said, Inga, just to clarify, uh, if there was a new proposal for a mural, which I'm actually meeting tomorrow on the McCone Building at Monterey Institute, that's a not that's not a historic building. So that would go to the architectural review committee and our, our commission would not see it at all, right? Right, and it wouldn't necessarily go to the architectural review commission, committee because, commission because the um, planning department has some discretion. Yeah. So it may or may not have to go to a commission for approval. Yeah, Alrighty. So are there any questions? Um, as I said, I think at the last meeting, the Old Monterey Foundation, our uh, Monterey County Gives project for this year is to do murals in the downtown area. And um, we've met with the Golden State Theater. He wants to take care of the front facade first, but he's very anxious. And of course that's a historic building, but the one that's moving along um, the, in a timely fashion is the one at Monterey Institute. The McCone building is, uh, actually right down there from Dutra, uh, straight across. And if you look at the north side of the building, there's a big blank wall by a parking lot. The um, MIIS recently closed off that street to make it a pedestrian area. So the mural would sort of fit in with that area. And the but subject matter of the mural? They're uh, meeting tomorrow on that, uh, Bob. Last, we had met with them a couple of years ago and we had thought that would be a great mural to highlight the language capital of the world, uh, showing different cultures and languages and all that. Now, even though they dropped the language requirement that it's no longer mandatory, they still rely quite a bit on you having another language besides English. So we've met with them, they like that idea, but they're just in the, in the planning stages right now. I have a question. Uh... Why don't uh, projects that involve a historic structure uh, also go to architectural review? Shouldn't they? Uh, shouldn't so, all projects go through the architectural review? Well, from my past, uh, this as being the community development director, John, the city council was um, concerned about a a small a project going to two different commissions, so they. Instead of what they did was put architectural expertise on the historic commission. So if something's happening on a historic building, it goes to the HPC. As uh, Inga said, if it's not historic, it goes to the ARC. And the HPC does have design experience in their commissioners. 
Well, I was on HPC, and I remember projects that went to HPC and and the Architectural Review Commission's both. So, yeah, I think if that was a building project, um, uh, I'm not. I, Kim Cole would be the one, I guess, to go over the uh, the what are the current policies. But I think if you're right, if there was, a, say, an addition uh, to the Golden State Theater, which is a historic building, that would go to HPC first and then the ARC. But I think if there's just a mural, it's my understanding from Kim, that that would only go to HPC. Of course, it could be appealed to the Planning Commission and then subsequently appealed to the City Council. Okay. Mike wants to speak. And so does Kim. And Good, Mike. Uh, un unmute, Mike and Kim. You're both muted. Well, I thought Mike, Mike was going to go first, so I was waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mute button first. And I, uh, my okay? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little uh, puzzled by our term public art. Does public art mean art that's on public buildings, or does it mean art that the public can see? I, I'm not sure how we get off telling private individuals what to put on their wall. Did, did the mayor get permission for the mural he's putting on his garage door? <laughs> Are you calling that art? Oh no, just joking. Um, no, uh, again, and my understanding was that public art is if uh, in the Macomb building, actually they have quite a bit of art inside the lobby, but if it's visible from a, a, a generally public street, then that requires review by commission. And you're right, it's not, it's viewable by the public, but it's not public art. But generally anything that's, um, it'd be like if they wanted to paint that wall a different color, it would still go to the ARC, uh, the McCone building wall. And if they're putting a mural there that's visible from the public, visible to the public and from Pierce Street, then again, that requires review. Most of our art, most of our art actually is public, right? The, the rec trail, well, the, the conference center is owned by the city, that great mural on the conference center, the, the mural and the parking lot of Kelly P. So I would say most of the murals that Kat Morgan showed last uh, time, most of those were public. One of the few private ones was that uh, restaurant on El Verado called Taco. Kim, Kimberly? Yes, um, I just wanna clarify, make sure I understand uh, when, if there's a public art master plan uh, that makes it so the um, mural plans are reviewed by this body. Is that in addition to the HPC and the ARC or is it instead of, or, I mean, are we adding one more step or is it my, my understanding, and I could be completely wrong, but my understanding would be that because it's artwork, it would come to this body and it wouldn't, be necessarily going to other bodies for review. Thank you. I'm confused then. Uh, how does the P uh, Preservation Commission and uh, the Architectural Review Commission get involved then? It would seem to me that if it's art, it should be the purview of this commission. And if the art is approved, and that needs to be reviewed either by the Historic Preservation Commission or the other commission, then it goes to them. Is that correct? Well, we don't have a public, you know, those are all good questions. And they, they that should be resolved in an art master plan. I think yeah. what uh, Kim Cole was saying, this is our current process now. Those are all good questions. And once an art master plan is developed, then it would go, then those questions would be answered. Does it have to go to the historic commission? Does it have to go to the design? Or uh, are there enough policies in the art master plan that would only be reviewed by the commission, uh, museum commission? But I think those are good questions that would come about with a public. Uh, again, as I mentioned to Kim Cole and Inga, we've done a lot of public art without a public master plan. 
I mean, yes. if you look at all the art, uh, the rec trail, the conference center, what, what about the fact that we spend all that time and effort on the utility boxes? I was gonna ask Inga, has anybody, <laughs> since we did all that work, what, a year, year and a half ago, have we had one application for somebody to paint a utility box? We had one person inquire about it, so I sent the materials to that person and I didn't hear anything back. Huh. Yeah. It ended up being pretty complex from my point of view. Yeah. But I think not too many people, I don't think the art community knows about the, the ordinance um, and the fact that we're encouraging public art on utility boxes. I think that needs to be added to our uh, museum and cultural arts website, which is still under yeah. construction. Yeah, and also sent like to, um, isn't there an art group with Paulette Lynch? I forget the name of them, the Council of Art or whatever. The youth, oh yeah. And then also Youth Arts Commission. Yeah. But anyway, Was going back to murals and uh, the need for this art master plan, which actually you're proposing that we do did you say that is part of our strategic plan to do? Yeah, it's, yeah. we snuck it onto that strategic plan. Um, I don't know, maybe it was last year. Yeah. Are there any quite other questions from the commission on um, on this item? Where I, I'm sorry, either I blanked or, but uh, where are we on the development of the art master plan? Well, in our uh, strategic plan um, that was recently revised, so it's not as if this couldn't be revised, we said that we were going to work on that after the Path of History Master Plan was finalized. So you're saying Path of History, whether it's the plan or the sub areas, that has higher priority in the strategic plan? Mm -hmm. yeah. Currently, yes. Already, any other any other just, questions by the commission? Sideline here, we mentioned the utility art box. Did that ever get publicity, say, in the any of the papers, or the public just doesn't know about it? That's a very good question. I'm not sure how it was publicized when it was uh, first approved. So, at this point, I think there we could do publicity again. I think as a minimum, what you said, Inga, we could put it on our website and send it to the various art organizations. I mean, um, the one that Paulette Lynch, uh, the youth, uh, the YAC, uh, I think this and CSUMB, they have an art program too, right? Yes. Yeah. But if we could send it to all those groups, um, as well as putting it on our website. Okay. Alrighty, any other questions or should we open it for public input? Francesca? Hey, thank you. To make a public comment, please raise your Zoom hand or if you called in by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Kawatowski, there are no public comments. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to the next item, the update on the path of history. Sure. Yeah. So at our last commission meeting, the commission approved the committee's recommendation that we pursue three paths, three walks as a pilot. And so, um, that was where we left things. So, so now at this meeting, I'm uh, letting you know that we are going to be applying for a community impact grant. And um, that's the goal at least. And uh, I was thinking that uh, we might just limit it to two of those paths, but I think that I need to speak with the grant um, contact at the community foundation to get her take on that before we just say we're not going to pursue all three. And I think that's sort of the gist of the report, unless I'm 
missing something. Um, we and oh, which ones to pursue? If we only pursue two, then it seemed to me that the ones that we had more control over would be Pearl, the Pearl um, area, and Colton Hall. I think we want to keep Colton Hall in there in any of the ones that we do. Um, the third one that might be sort of more like let's do two successfully and then do the third would be the one that involves state parks. But again, I, I don't know for sure. State parks might be chomping at the bit to work with us. I just don't know yet. So all three are very um, you know, worthy paths to pursue. So there's a short time frame, uh, Inga. Do you and Jordan, I mean, would the next step be after you contact the community foundation that you put a very, very rough draft of a, a grant and then sit down with our, uh, our subcommittee to yes. go over that? Yes. And do you have time to do that, to meet that deadline? We will give it, I will give it my best shot. Alrighty. Any, uh, are there questions from the commissioners? No, I, I, uh, Roberta and I rode our recumbent trikes around the Pearl Street uh, path and, uh, it certainly works better in a clockwise direction for people on two or three wheels. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> one thing I thought we'd do is, is write it again and take pictures of each of the sites. I think a little thumbnail oh, great. of the buildings would be helpful on whatever materials that are handed out. Um, and are we thinking about adding uh, cell phone sites at each of the sites or would it be all uh, in some kind of single uh, site uh, for the uh, for the whole route that's well, a good question you know it's mm -hmm. our intent to get a um, a consultant to actually do the do the work and that would be one of the main questions uh, and we had talked about last time bob that the cell phone would sort of say here you are on site number seven and give that history of that site and then uh turn to your right walk two blocks to site number eight so that this uh the cell phone could be sort of a, a walking tour but a lot of hopefully we would get a consultant that has that has done some of this kind of work before, and they would be uh, very helpful on that. Would mm -hmm. we were we able to get the intern who did so much work on the path of history? She moved out of the area though, right? Right, but she is available um, and happy to talk with us. Okay. And um, Bob did ask about why a particular building wasn't on the tour. Do you remember what building that was, Bob? And since uh, Tim is yeah. here, Tim might be able to say something about that building. Uh, hang on a second. I can. Uh, it's at the corner of. It's at the corner of Abrego and Church Street. It's on the inside of that corner. It's the uh, Madera Iga Adobe. I don't, may, maybe that's not the way to pronounce it. M A D A R. I A G A Adobe. Oh. Are you familiar with that Adobe off the top of your head, Tim? I'm not actually. I mean, I think I know where it is, but I'm I'm not sure why it's not on there. Yeah, it's between 12 and 11. If you yeah. if you look at the map, um, and so uh, de de depending on which way you go around, either one, you you would end up seeing it. But if you come around in a clockwise it's right on your right hand side as you're going to either cross the street or go down the right hand side of Abrego and 12 and 13 and 14 are on the other side of the street at that point. Mm. Yeah, so I will still look into that. Yeah, it's also noted um, that some of the buildings have various sized uh, brass plaques explaining about the buildings and some of them don't have, may have just a sign out by the curb, like some of the adobes do. So we don't have any consistency at this point. 
which is, I think, a part of the original uh, suggested master plan was that we adopt uh, a set of standardized ways of identifying the buildings and their history or whatever. That I also too, Inga was nice enough to share with me the link to the cell phone tours website. And on that website, the tour is, it's, it's almost overwhelming the amount of information they provide on each side. But again, there are no directions. It's, it's really designed for somebody uh, trying to tour the city and they're in New York City and looking about, maybe thinking about California or something. <laughs> it's not, it's a, at this point, that site is not really geared to steering people around a particular walk. So. All right. So Bob, you're a member of the subcommittee, right? Yep. And so is Tim. Tim, do you have any comments? Um, I don't at this point, other than I'm wondering why you tried to choose go just to go two and not all three. Is it because of state parks or? Well, and we don't know yet if, yeah. we, if we should just do three or two. So that's part of what I will talk to okay. the community foundation about. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, any other questions or comments from uh, the other commissioners? Hearing none, um, Francesca, do you want to ask if there are any public comments? Yes, to make a public comment, please raise your Zoom hand, or if you called in by phone, dial star nine. Trawatowski, there are no public comments. Okay, so I don't know if this needs a motion, but the, the Inga's proposal is that we proceed with at least two and possibly three after checking with the Community Foundation for a grant to hire a firm, a historic or planning firm that will put together um, uh, a more detailed uh, sub area plan, at least for Colton Hall and for Pearl Street. Does anybody have any questions or objections to that? Alrighty, so the subcommittee will wait, uh, Inga, you'll contact Community Foundation and then put together a, a, a rough draft and then uh, call a subcommittee meeting, right? Yes. Okay. I have, one other thing I, I have one thing I should have mentioned. So JACL in, in part of our opening or reopening our museum is we are creating, oh, actually I have done it before, a, a, a walking tour of what was once a modern day Japantown, which we're gonna to start to give on a monthly basis. Okay. Well, that's a good segue to the next item, Tim, which is a report on the JACL and what's happening. And are they going to, I know you had a very successful grand opening. We did. So we opened uh, last, uh, on the 22nd, we opened our museum. Those of you who don't know, we actually, this museum has about, it's been about 10 years in the making. And we actually opened it uh, about two weeks before the pandemic hit two years ago. And we had to close it almost immediately. And, and so it's pr pretty much been closed all that time. And uh, I have changed some things in the museum and added some things. And then we decided to put the mural in, which is the background I have is the artwork for our mural. And uh, we went through that process. Uh, what was funny because we did that process, I had went to the planning people and they wanted us to go through the historic preservation thing because we were in a historic building. When I explained to them that the building, the mural being painted on is the back of the Children's Museum, which is not a designated historic building. And they changed how they actually approved it in-house for us, that whole process. Um, and so uh, we had about 100 people here for the reopening. Uh, a Congressman Bella came and gave a nice talk. And it was a really great event. We were able to gather a lot of names, folks who want to be volunteers in the museum and help give some of those walking tours and uh, stuff like that. So. We're all very happy with it. And uh, the only point we haven't got yet is the garden, which was supposed to be part of this. And there was some kind of labor issues with uh, from the landscape guy. And so hopefully within the next month or so, we will have the garden in as well. So we'll all be, uh, and we're gonna put a new gate in. We're moving our gate from, the, from where it is 
down closer to the opening of the museum and it'll be with a, sort of a Japanese style, what they call a moon gate. And it will be open mm -hmm. on the weekdays for people who were just walking there who want to sit on a bench and have lunch and that kind of thing. Will the museum be open on a regular basis? Yes. Like, um, on weekends? It will be. It will be open just on the weekends, uh, Saturday and Sundays from uh, uh, 10 to 4. And I'll be okay. starting in the next couple of weeks now. Well, that's a great, I, hopefully, uh, Inga, so now we'll have the Colton Hall Museum, the Presidio Museum, Casa Serrano by Monterey History and Art, and now the, the Japanese Museum. So we'll have four museums open on weekends, and hopefully at each location, there could be, you know, the location and the hours uh, of all the other museums. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to throw out too that uh, anybody on this committee or anybody in the staff as well, I'm happy to open it up to give you guys tours of the museum. Uh, come by, and give me a call, send me an email, and because uh, I'm here all the time. <laughs> I think we should all go together. On it. Yeah, I think we should. Well, that's the funny part. You were supposed to come. Dennis Copeland at that time had arranged it, and then the pandemic hit, and it didn't happen. That's right. So it would be a field trip. Right. Yeah. Right. Can we do that at our next meeting? Would that be okay with Brown Act and everything in the Zoom? I'll have to find out. Yeah. I think you just have to notice it, and anybody in the public who wants to join us can. Yeah. Yeah. Great. No, good suggestion. Any great. other? Any addition? Uh, additional comments, Tim? Um. Just that I'm really excited about it. I'm very happy to have that have it reopened again, and and we got really good comments from the public that was here that Saturday. And I had a couple of things. So one thing, Tim, is the garden uh, features some fish baskets from yes. the Xavier I, Cannery Warehouse, right? Correct. So the bat we actually got a grant from another Japanese organization to put the mural and garden in, and part of the grant I wrote into it was. The, what are the fish baskets from San Xavier? San Xavier County played a very important role to the Japanese community, especially after World War II, uh, hiring them back to work in the canneries. Um, and, but the plants that are gonna go into those baskets, uh, so the area in Japan uh, where all these abalone fishermen came from, they all come pretty much from the same area. A little area town called Shirahama is famous not only for abalone and other fishing, it's also famous or flowers in the spring. And they grow all these little beautiful wildflower kind of thing. Very colorful. People have come from all over Japan by buses, huge busloads of people uh, yes. to see these flowers. I've been there in the spring. And so we're going to be planting those flowers in our baskets to continue that connection between uh, Monterey and, and, and Shirahama. Wow. My second question is, is there a brochure? Do you have like a a brochure for the museum that we could then stock in Colton Hall and um, there it is right here. Our other locations. I have lots of them, and I will. And I I gave some somewhere to somebody, but I'll bring some. I'll bring some over to the library tomorrow. Okay, that I have sounds a, good. I have a question to ask Tim. Uh, you've been to Shirahoma or whatever. Yes, many times. Um, they're not a sister city with Monterey, though, are they? Yeah, they are not a sister city. They are, the now is Monterey sister city. Shirahama, actually, there's a little peninsula, which looks very much like Monterey, I might add. The big town is called Tatiyama. Um, it, that historically, that's Monterey's true historic sister city in, in, in Japan, is that area there. But it's not there officially. Are, there are, not officially, but I, but there's many uh, these little homes that these Abilene fishermen came from who came to Monterey well over 100 years ago. And I've been in many of these little homes and every single house, every house has a shrine to Monterey. Wow. We well, did not it, know that existed until. Yeah, that's incredible. It seems to yeah. me that it, it would be a better sister city than a lot of the sister cities we already have. I mean, there's already a strong connection. Is there, yeah, I work with the museum and Tatiana, and we have a connection with them. And so it's really a nice thing. So we have in our museum, we have uh, the beautiful my white jacket with, with the Monterey one uh, that you probably some of you have seen. 
it's on the cover of our brochure, but there's only two of those that exist in the world, the one we have here, and then the one that's on permanent exhibit at the museum in Tatiyama. So again, we make that connection between our two communities. So who gets to propose a uh, sister city status for a city? Uh, I don't know about that part. <laughs> so I believe that any citizen can um, propose that, and there's a process that the city goes through. Uh, my understanding, having talked to somebody who was working on a sister city project um, a couple of years ago, is the city is kind of uh, not focusing on those right now. Okay. But Maybe some I think there are lots of ingredients that suggest this would be a perfect candidate that we could do. So somebody could champion that initiative. Sounds like a job for our staff. Yeah. <laughs> what staff <laughs> all right any other comments and besides congratulations to tim and the japanese community for opening up the museum i know one one function where uh inga's other hat as a library director is that um, the library does various uh talks by local authors and we just did one by sharon randall who um used to write for the Herald, her first book came out. And another uh, young, fel a young fellow, well, actually I haven't met him, but uh, he's in Carmel, Tony Drago. And he wrote a, a book about surviving uh, Hiroshima. His mother was, I think his mother was eight or nine years old when the bomb hit. And so he's gonna be speaking and uh, at, the, uh, at the JACL as part of a author's talk. And maybe you could send out the time and date and all that, Inga, to the commission. So I they will. Yeah, I believe it's on the 17th. Do you remember? I, Bill I don't off the top of my head. Okay. That sounds right, too. I think that's correct. It's the Saturday. Oh. I think it's the 19th, I think. Oh, okay. 19th. It's a week, yeah. Yeah, it's a week before chocolate and wine. Okay. But, but I if you could send that sure. out just the time and so to remind the, the commissioners and that would be another time that it's going to be held upstairs in the assembly, but maybe we can, um, if Tim's there, we can uh, sneak down and see the museum at that time too. The museum will be open for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Tim. That's Thank quite you. an accomplishment. So any other questions or comments on that item? That's our last Mike. item on the- Mike yeah. has a comment, question. Oh. Uh, Good, Mike. My son and I went to the opening and I mean, there was a huge crowd and it was very well, uh, you know, everybody liked it. And it was really a great job, whoever. Thank you, Tim and others. Thanks. Are there any other comments? Uh, question. Uh, what happened to the, uh, at the budget meeting or was it, I think there was supposed to be a budget meeting recently to see, no? So the, are you asking about uh, our staffing? Yes, <laughs> right? yes. So the, the planning for the budget for next year hasn't kicked off yet. Okay. So there, uh, we should be getting instructions by tomorrow. And typically there's a month or a month and a half when the department heads have time to work through what their budget proposal is gonna be for next year. And then there's a budget hearing and then it goes, uh, it's approved or not approved by city manager, but, um, and then it would go to city council and be decided in early June. But um, so that process hasn't happened yet. What you will see coming up at the first meeting in March at the city council, is what's called a mid-year budget adjustment. And that's whenever there've been um, glitches, errors, things left out, or maybe um, some departments have requested additional positions be added. That all happens at the mid-year budget. And we don't have anything on the mid-year budget for museums. We have some corrections for the library, but we don't have anything for the museums. Good question, Bob. Already going through commissioner comments. Uh, Bob, do you have any other comments? No, thanks. Uh, John Castagna, you're up. Do you have any? Mm, no. John O'Neill. 
I'd like to congratulate Jordan. If he gave a tour of two people and one of them volunteered, I'd like you to sign up for the lighthouse in the, in the Japanese museum too. <laughs> oh, good job, Jordan. Thank you. Any other comments, John? No, thank you. Okay, uh, Kimberly? No comments, thank you. Uh, Mike? Yes, I'm, I'm wondering about the Order of the Legion of Merit around your neck, uh, Bill. Oh, that's just a little pendant from Portugal. Oh. <laughs> uh, Tim, any other, any comments, commissioner comments? Um, no, not at this time. Uh, the only one I would have, Inga, I know, um, do you have enough with the loss of that one uh, docent, do we have enough people for the Colton Hall Museum? I actually have just recently received several um, inquiries from interested parties. So we hope to have um, some new people on board fairly, fairly shortly. So okay. we're sending out application information. And um, since we might reopen, um, extend our hours in the summer again. So it's probably a good idea to have a few people, even though we just lost one person. I would okay. think. So, but meanwhile, you're able to keep it open uh, Saturday and Sunday. Right, the one remaining person, Jeff, and then the <laughs> Jordan, who is everywhere <laughs> in all places at all times, um, have been keeping it open. So we're Great. we're really really lucky. But since it's your comments, Bill, did you have any comments yet to share about the um, Monterey Museum of Art? And you were invited to like sit in on a there's oh, planning process or anything no um they haven't called me yet on that okay. end. but I, okay. when i do i'll be glad to give my comments to the commission i did have an interesting meeting with um paul lynch and ken peterson and the mayor and they would like to see if there could be more they go to the lower presidio quite a bit they're part of that 161 visitors and they love the Lower Presidio, but they wish that it was even more active. I, I told them about the city constraints with the Native Americans, that until we resolve that issue, uh, um, nothing else is going to happen for a while there. They also had, a, this would be interesting, they said that it would be nice if we can uh, have more activity by Custom House. And they mentioned that, you know, this is something that's um, belabored the city and the state for a long time. We have that great plaza, but there's no activity. And mm -hmm. they suggested, you know, more coffee shops and stuff like that. So it'd be interesting. Again, maybe when mm -hmm. we ever meet with state parks, I told them that we would invite them to meet with the state parks uh, staff on that. We moved the Coupa Malera store into the custom house, but that's not a that's not a big generator of traffic. So anyway, that was my only comment. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for coming to a Zoom meeting. Hopefully in March, we'll be back in person again. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.